going to be working on the Zippy Sculpt from start to finish. Zippy is a sculpt by Andrea Cello. I like to personally buy directly from the sculptors, support them a little bit more. If can't, then I'll go through one of their distributors. But you can do this method with any kit that you choose, but I'm using this particular one because we are making a memorial baby. But I wanted to take the opportunity to show you kind of start to finish how I create an ethnic baby. With this particular kit, I do not need to wash. Um, that's kind of a hot topic for a lot of people. Some people are very adamant about washing their kits prior to painting and others are not. And I am on that not side. Um, the only time I really wash my kits is if I can see that there's visibly a lot of residual oil or dirt or marks, then I might go ahead and, and wash them. That's Unfortunately, fun. because they ran out of the raw materials during COVID, and so it's very hard to get the colors now. I'm actually running out of my matte varnish and some of my mediums, so I will need to eventually switch over to the new heat set lines. Uh, which I think I'm going to go with BC with, mm, but I'm not entirely sure. But we'll get to that bridge later when we cross it. So, up to you. The information I give you is going to be something that you could use with your other paint lines when it comes to color theory and technique. Color language is universal between all lines, so you'll often find that... Um, most lines will have that burnt sienna, the raw umber, Mars black, uh, cadmium yellow, um, dioxazine purple, so on and so forth. You know what I mean? Take so. the color theory information and technique kind of and make it yours. I'm going to go right. right into working on doing washes with him. So the first thing I tell people is you want to make sure that you have your tools and your paints ready to go when you get started. So with this particular... Uh, baby will be doing the primary method we using the genesis red the ultramarine blue and the genesis yellow then i will go ahead and i'll make all my secondary colors um like um your violet and like your green uh, let's see here i'm trying to find my other color don't have an, my other one ready but my, this is a really dark yellow but like your orange you know and then you can go from there into your treachery colors i keep my paints in glass jars not in plastic because i end up having my thinner evaporate and then i'm constantly having to add thinner to my paints to reconstitute it so I'm wasting more thinner. So I have gone back to using my glass jars that have like screw top lids. Um, you can use like these little jars, the little mason jars. They work fantastic. And these were actually um, jars that were sold in a dozen um, in the wedding aisle. I believe it was at um, Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby. There And they had them on clearance. So it was like, I think I spent like maybe eight bucks for a dozen of these so it was a deal and they're perfect sizing um and i just have them nice and handy for whenever i need them the other thing that you're going to need is you're going to need your brushes i like to have my brushes kind of ready to go i don't wash my brushes because i use a heat set oil based line um so I don't really need to do that. And then when I'm not painting, I always keep my brushes covered to protect them from any lint or dust or anything like that. Well, I have it set up so I have the mixing brushes on the bottom and then the working brush on top. And I will have my tools when it comes to sponges. So I might have my sea sponges and I usually keep just a few of them out that I know that I use quite a bit. So like these sea sponges I use a lot. So I have these guys and then I have all of my um, texture sponges ready to go. The other tool I like is I like these little pouncers uh, and then I will just pluck out the surface of these pouncers to create however much texture I want to see. Of course we use um, our modeling sponges which I'll show you just for an example. Um, these guys. So the modeling sponges you can see have much larger holes that are spaced further apart so that it's going to have more of like a veining appearance. 
I've heard people using like training pads for puppies pad they call them puppy pads but that the puppy pads actually have a chemical in them that attracts dogs to go to the bathroom on them so because I don't want any chemicals mixing or anything I don't use puppy pads I use actual like mattress cover pads that you can get like by the adult diapers okay and then I will get my paper towels and I lay down like two layers of paper towels I try not to pounce any extra color or anything like that on my surface uh, of my area and we'll get into that later however um, I just want to have a nice clean area to work with and this is basically just protecting my counter and kind of keeping my area as clean as possible the colors I want to have ready to go the first thing is the washes the washes are much thinner consistency than your um, other colors now right now these are quite dark because I need to mix more color I use one part color to three parts thinner and I specifically use the Mona Lisa thinner with my Genesis heat set paints this is your Genesis red which is this lovely color um, your ultramarine blue which is this one and your Genesis yellow which is this one so when I'm mixing my washes I'm gonna take those mixing brushes like I had told you you can use your half inch um, flat shader brushes or your cheap brushes whatever but a small brush um, I usually have like those dedicated brushes like I said so I don't have to worry about crossing colors and then making accidentally making my secondary and tertiary colors when I'm trying to use my primary colors so um, I'm going to use one swipe on each side of a half inch flat shader brush with my Genesis Red to three parts thinner. So it's much more thin consistency. With any of the Genesis, I will also add a few drops of baby oil, usually like um, four, three or four drops of oil and that helps slowing down the flashing time and it also makes my paint a little bit more workable. You don't want to run out of paint in the middle of painting your parts because then you're going to have maybe an arm or a leg that the shade or the hue is just not quite right so you want to make sure you have enough paint mixed up ahead of time to be able to get through all of your limbs that you're working with okay so by now you should have your paints nice and mixed up i will tell you about how dark your paint should be in just a second here so let me get my brush all right so again if you didn't remember one swipe of color on each side of your brush with the Genesis Red to three parts of your thinner. I use the um, Mona Lisa thinner with a few drops of your baby oil if you're using Genesis. You want your red to kind of be that transparent, okay? You want just a hint of red. Yep. And I'll show you what the blue looks like get my this is my lovely little mixing brush again using your half inch uh, brush one swipe of the ultramarine blue on each side and you can kind of determine how dark you want it but for the blue I have it very thin uh, you can kind of see the transparency on that your Genesis yellow again one swipe on each side with your three parts thinner few drops of baby oil if you're using Genesis and I usually do it in that um, transparent okay primary is ready for this little guy I'm gonna actually start off with using my blue he's got that nice kind of peachy tone to him so I'm gonna go ahead and work with that and I'm gonna do a wash and the reason why I want to do a wash right off the bat is so that one I can give it a base coat so that the rest of the layers will build off of it really nicely and it will slightly neutralize it down just a tiny bit um, to give it a little bit more of a kind of a 
fresh palette to work from. We're going to go right into using our blue and doing our first washes. Uh, with him, I will start from the back, working my way towards the front, using my working brush. You can see how thin it is. It's not thick at all. Very thin, transparent layers. So you're gonna just go ahead and cover the entire kit. The reason I go with the back first is that way if something is off or the color is way too dark, I am able to adjust it and hide that color a little bit better. All right, guys. So I had finished doing the wash on little Zippy's head and I had already finished doing one arm. Now I'm gonna go ahead and continue on doing the other arm. And when you have like open fingers like this, I usually will kind of start with um, the flange area up here and then I go back and then I move these fingers open a little bit so that I can get in there. Otherwise, it's very difficult. Um, I'm gonna do one layer on the hand that goes over the nails, but I do a painting technique um, that is called absence of color that I will show you guys later, but I'm gonna go ahead and do one layer uh, with this, okay. Now you gotta make sure it's nice and thin and I usually will kind of put my hand in there and it gives me a little bit more stability. You don't want any brush marks. So if you find that you're having problems with the paint um, leaving behind brush marks, you can either go back and um, use your texture sponge, which is what I usually do over the hand, um, to pick up any excess color. So I'll kind of flip it over and use the angular portion of my sponge to kind of get into these little nooks and crannies. That way I don't have my creases building up and getting dirty because uh, we want to make those creases nice and natural looking. And you'll find that I don't necessarily do a crease color. I will do just um, the colors that I'm working with and I build them up slowly. Okay, and then making sure that I got all areas. Okay, so I finished this little hand. I've got the other hand already done. I'm gonna go on to doing his legs and I'm gonna do this um, probably two more rounds. So as long as I'm staying in the same color family when I'm doing my washes, um, then I can do more than one round. So after this layer flashes, then I can go ahead and do a second layer without baking. I will do two to three rounds before baking for each um, color that I'm doing with washes. So continue on, do about three layers of your blue washes. If you've got excess blue, um, don't, um, don't panic. You can use your texture sponges to kind of pounce out some of that excess color. If you really want to, you can go in with your Kabuki brush and you can do that. This is actually the Eco Tools um, foundation brush, I think. I don't even remember. I love this brush. It works really well. I use makeup brushes almost all the time when I'm dry brushing. And I can put the link to the tools that I use in um, the description below for you in case you're interested in using what I use. So I'm gonna go back, do two more rounds, letting the paint flash between each layer, and then I'm gonna go ahead and bake this. After we get done with the blue, we're gonna pick up and we're gonna go right into our next layer, which we'll talk about next in a moment. I haven't quite gone on to doing the second or the third layer of blue yet because I actually forgot to do one step that I always forget every time I start a kit. 
I don't know why, but I always kind of catch myself after I do the first layer and then I'm like, dang it, I remembered I forgot something. And that something is opening the nose holes. Um, I personally like to open the nose holes because I feel like it has a little bit more depth and looks a little bit more natural and realistic. Uh, so I will show you how I do that. It's very, very simple. And then when you're completely done and you're assembling your kit, you just basically put a piece of um, felt on the inside of the bridge of the nose and that will kind of give that um, extra depth but it closes the nose hole so you don't see any kind of stuff coming through the nose hole. You just see this dark, dark purple way back. Um, but it also gives a, an undertone on that bridge of the nose as well. So it kind of feeds um, two purposes at once. Okay, so I've got these lovely tools. They come in different uh, shapes and sizes, but these are the two that I typically use almost all the time. Um, I don't know if you can see real good, but this one is kind of a triangular shape, which works really good when you have those nostrils that are more elongated versus round. And then I also use this guy, which is more of a round shape with a tapered point. Um, with this little guy's nose, he almost has a triangular shape. I don't know if you guys can see See it real great. Um, you want to be really careful when you're opening nose holes if you haven't done it before. So I know it looks scary. So I'm going to use my round tool uh, and that works really good just to kind of pierce the initial um, hole. And I'm kind of squeezing the head a bit while I'm doing that because I don't want to accidentally go up into the eye socket or any other area. And I, I just basically do this kind of twisting motion um, just to kind of get started. And then as I'm twisting it, being careful if it slips out, I'm kind of going in and out, pulling and twisting. So you can kind of see the vinyl kind of coming out as I'm turning the, the tool. And I'm gonna do this and I'm kind of, going back and forth, but I'm angling my tool very slightly uh, in different directions on the inside because once you poke the hole, ultimately what's going to happen is that on the inside of the, the vinyl or inside of the head, the vinyl is going to like uh, pierce in and then kind of spread out like this a bit. The portion of the vinyl that kind of kind of broke up open inside the head is going to kind of lay back together and it's not going to give you that depth that you want. So you're kind of filing the edges of the portion that you had broke open to get it to lay more flat so that you actually see a hole. See how I got my little hole started? That's about the size I go but I will continue on just filing the edges to get it to have a nice opening, making sure I don't go too deep. I just kind of wipe off my tool or uh, blow on my vinyl just to kind of get that extra um, shavings off and we're done. So that is the that is as far as I will go with the depth because you're going to be painting inside the nostrils all around the edges of the nose. So it's it's going to all look nice and dark and have a lot of depth, but it's going to give it that extra oomph by opening the nose holes. It's kind of a, a easy quick process. Okay. Pinching that head. It's kind of tough when you first get started because your tool can sometimes slip. So you got to be careful that if it slips out, you slowly put it back in the same hole because you can kind of see how it's just starting to get a hole. You got to be careful because you could potentially end up 
scratching the vinyl somewhere else uh, and you don't want to do that and you got to be careful too of not making the hole too big because we don't want to be having this giant hole where you've got potential issues almost there just kind of go on this side a little bit and you can kind of do this rounding motion too okay i'm liking that not not a lot just a tiny bit and your eye will be drawn further in to the opening so you'll have that nice depth okay so now that we've actually got the nose opened i can continue on i'm going to finish doing the second layer of blue using our blue washes like we've been doing and i will let that completely flash and once I let that flash, meaning allowing the thinner to evaporate, leaving behind the paint, I will do our third layer of blue. After the third layer has finished flashing, then I will go ahead and bake that round. So I don't know if you remember, but I usually will do two to three rounds of paint when I'm using the same color, uh, and then I will bake. Uh, and then we'll move on to the next color. After we finish the blue, sorry, I just noticed something. Uh, we'll move on to our next color. I will be moving on to red afterwards. And the reason behind that is because if I added the blue and the green, although it's not mixed together, it still will create a hue. Hue is just going to be kind of like a color family, okay? So when I'm adding blue and baking it, and if I added a yellow and baked it, I might get a tinge of a green hue coming from the two layers. So if I want to have them work more uh, harmoniously, I want to use my blue and my red, which will give us more of that purple tone so for you uh, that are following along and doing the steps go ahead and do your three rounds if you're doing air dry um, I don't do air dry so you'll have to kind of refer back to whatever type of air dry you're working with but making sure that each layer has completely cured and then we'll be back to work on the red if you're having fun hanging out and you're learning some new things and you haven't been with us before, I really appreciate you joining in and checking out my channel. So make sure that you subscribe and hit that little bell so you get notified at the bottom when I have another video pop up. And I will also put all of those links to the tools that we've been using in the description so you'll be able to easily find those. I will see you guys all again for part two when we do the red layers. Thanks guys.